And we are super psyched to welcome our newest sponsor, Thunder Road Guitars. Thunder Road Guitars is the Pacific Northwest best source for premium, new, used, and vintage guitars, amplifiers, and pedals. Online or in their Seattle, that's West Seattle, or Portland stores. You'll find fantastic customer service and a terrific vibe. I know because I'm in there a lot. Grab a cup of coffee, swing on in, don't spill your coffee, and check it all out. And now if you use code TOURSTORIES10, you can get 10% off at thunderroadguitars.com. Yes, that's me playing guitar. Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course, and it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stores. Have a great one. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And to get your discount, use code FRET10 at checkout. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. Please enjoy your day. Fellas. How's it going? Good. Doing good. How are you, man? I'm good. Um, because there's three of you, can we get um, you to give the people your name and identify your voice, <laughs> the red pairs? Uh, my name is Patrick Juarez. I play bass and guitar. All right. I'm uh, Jose Corona. I play drums. My name is Henry Vargas. I sing for the red pairs and, yeah, I play guitar. All right. Patrick Henry Jose. I don't know if I did that in the right order, but remember these voices, listener. Um, how you guys doing? Good. Really good. Yeah. Just uh yeah. Just trotting along. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Uh we came to a uh a conference room with uh Cosmica that uh, like our management, they have a little room to do this like, better instead of doing like at our garage or house. Right. Like, to, like do this like in a nice isolated room. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Sounds good. Are you um in Los Angeles? Yeah, okay. Los Angeles. Oh, where are you guys from in L.A.? Uh, we're from El Monte, maybe like 20 minutes east of L.A. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Why have I not been to El Monte? I'm pretty familiar with L.A., but maybe I haven't. I don't know. It's like, uh, I guess it's like hard to, hard to find on Henry. Like I guess it's like... Uh, well, honestly, it's not really hard to find. It's just not much to do, so I guess it's not that known. <laughs> not much to do. That means there's probably good skate spots. Historically, that's what happens in towns like yeah, that. Yeah, there actually is. A, <laughs> yeah, there was an abandoned um, thing called Golf. Uh, yeah, Golfland that a BMX once it shut down, like a BMX, some BMX uh, riders went over there and and did some photo shoots. Looked pretty, pretty good. Oh, cool. So, did you all grow up there in El Monte? Yeah, Henry. Henry was born and raised there. Mm -hmm. uh, I I grew up. Around here, like around this area where we're at, like Boyle Heights, mm -hmm. and then Patrick, uh, where, were you, where were you from? Pretty much, yeah, I grew up in Monte too. All right. Yeah. What was what was the scene there? What was the music scene? What did you guys do growing up? Yeah, I, I think I kind of, me personally, I kind of uh, stayed away from those things. I don't know. I feel like I didn't really feel like I belonged. It was a lot of like ska and punk. Mm -hmm. I think I was more at home in my room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely skated, how you mentioned. That's what I picked up first. Yeah. And then just go to a lot of backyard shows that included like punk, metal, ska music. That was like the, the scene back then. And I think still here and there, you know, I think that that always comes back. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was just mostly like in school, like I was <laughs> just focusing on my, on like myself and stuff. I didn't even discover a scene actually until I discovered them in a scene. Okay. Uh, when did you? Uh, when did music sort of into your life, or at least playing music? I think for for me it was like um, around high school. Uh, my family's my mom and my sister uh, are very like I guess pronounced singers, um, so I was always around music but i i didn't think it'd be for me i just thought that was their thing i was a lot more into sports a lot of basketball hmm. um i i, I uh, wanted to do more of a like, journalism let's be a sports journalist oh really and uh and um i think high school there was a friend and he just was trying to start a band and he was like yeah i'll teach you like anything <laughs> if you're down and i was like yeah like just you know teach me and he, he needed a drummer so i so i started playing drums and then i personally like unlocked you know, this feeling that I, I didn't know existed, like playing and creating music. I'll never forget that feeling, you know, of like creating a song. Yeah. And being like, that's that's crazy. Like, like you know, this is like, this didn't exist before we made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that was like, uh, I was like 15, yeah, around there. I, I remember the same feeling, just going like, whoa, we just did this. Yeah, for me, I guess um I was always into music, but um I didn't really pick up an instrument I guess I played clarinet in fourth grade, mm -hmm. but like when I actually got serious was like high school. It was all around the same time. All of a sudden, these two guys, like they inspired me to pick up a guitar. And so I was like 15, 16. And I would see them and I would ask Henry, like, is this how you play your songs? And like pretty much that's just how it all started. Yeah, I was probably like in fifth, sixth grade. Um, I think I just wasn't feeling skating anymore and I wanted to pick up an instrument. Uh, that's how it, it happened. Just, just trying to make music. Didn't know how to tune the guitar. Um, had a guitar that had like pop strings, and I was like, if I could make a song with only two strings, like, <laughs> then I'll do only two strings. You know, I don't know how to restring a guitar. No, none of my family members were musicians. I think right. it was just something that I, I wanted to do. And and yeah, just learning songs from the radio. I didn't have internet growing up or anything like that to like help me. So yeah, I remember when I first got a guitar, I was like, "Oh, string just broke. I have no idea how to string this." I grew up in the sticks, so it was like no one to help me out there. How so? How long have you been together as the Red Pairs? Um, around almost ten years now. We started. Henry and I were like eighteen years old, um, mm -hmm. eighteen, nineteen years old. Yeah, so it's been almost almost ten years now. Yeah. Well, we're here to talk about your your newest record, "Better Late Than Never," that comes out April twelfth on daycare records um and there's a couple <laughs> singles out i've been listening to uh didn't realize a lot man it's a it's a very cool song and i really like the structure of it the trajectory of it and it's you know it's jangly guitars but it it feels to me like the the verse operates as the chorus and the chorus or the elevation of the song is the chorus it, it kind of just keeps going up with energy and uh I really like that structure. Oh, thank you. It's cool. That means a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, and to compare to your previous records, not not every song, of course, but it seems like your older records and older songs, a lot of them maybe referenced '50s pop structure almost and texture, but more like Kid Cruel or something like that. But this record, uh, the songwriting took took a turn. Can you put your finger on how this record is different? That's cool. That's a cool uh, way to explain it, dude. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, yeah, definitely. Like just growth and like honestly, le uh, learning how to operate in the studio, like, learning how to like implement more instruments, and I guess mm -hmm. uh, writing and rec like, recording is a is a huge deal. I feel like before it was we worried a lot more about the song itself not so much on the recording aspect and i feel like as we've gotten like older and done more and more recording of music we realized how important like the the aspect of the recording is and the production side of a yeah. song can be like either as important or either uh more important than the actual song itself like how you write and structure a song sure um so i think we really locked down there like built a studio in my garage like, with my parents place you know they, they uh, gave us the garage to kind of have it be our little music studio yeah great yeah yeah very very uh very fortunate to have the parents i have and uh 
um, Dion just kind of like had a, f- a friend, our friend Calvin, who helped produce it, and like mm-hmm. just he lent us his knowledge, and we were like, "What do we need?" And we'll go, we'll go get it. You know, so we got like all this like these setups, these preamps, like everything we needed to to kind of nail down this sound that we've yeah. been having in mind for like for years and years. You know, because it, it's it's hard to uh, be at at a, at a studio where you're 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 paying for you know for the hour for the day. Uh, it's a whole you know there's that pressure of like we're yeah. five days here like you know when you know the guy who's working there and it's like um it's a different vibe and i feel like recording and writing like in a more comfortable environment just uh brings out a lot more something else you know that it's like yeah that i feel like it's er, things aren't as hurried you know you have more time with stuff you could like chill out for a bit and you're not worried about money as much yeah yeah Yeah, when you're paying for it you get a little stressed if if a song that probably maybe you worked on forever just didn't work when you were tracking it that day in the studio that you're paying for stressful if you have unlimited time then you can always go back to it yeah i was gonna say it's funny that you mentioned about lyrics um we didn't realize uh that song was written in high school actually with jose and i jose and i wrote that song in high school and the lyrics stay, stayed the same. I, I didn't want to change anything from what we had in high school. Mm-hmm. Kind of wanted to keep that same mindset that I had once, and yeah, just just kind of keep it how it is. But I think as musicians, like sound wise, we improved on a lot of things. We we cut off a lot of the stuff that was felt like excess and not needed on on the song, just to like make it more simplistic and just straightforward. Yeah. I think I think when you're young and creating music. You want to like keep doing the same thing over and over and loop and you don't know how to end it it's like you know you, i think as as you develop as an artist you got to learn like when it's it's our it's good already and you don't have to touch it anymore um but i do think that this album lyric wise uh definitely have more impactful like meaning or words or like a story to tell mm-hmm. uh, um but yeah thank in you what when for, in what way uh, would you say the lyrics are or the story is different i think they like coincide with one another or like kind of blend in with with like the whole album kind of tells a whole story with with each song that you listen to even if you listen to from the last song uh you know like in any order i feel like it just kind of paints a story like differently yeah um but it could be talking about a similar relation or like something that's attached to that feeling yeah yeah, and I I do. I mean, I've I've I'm privy to the whole record, and I've listened to it a few times, and it does definitely feel different than the the previous records. The nice. mood is different. Yeah, yeah. I think also just like the elements we've added, like some some songs have like two, three guitars, you know, like like more than wh- than what we are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, right. And so I, but I think we really thought it, it really fit with the song. Like it, it needs this extra layer for sure. the song to make sense and to feel to feel like you just feel like the the texture more so than hearing it at times you know right yeah i was gonna <clears throat> i was gonna say, uh, mention something similar to how they just brought up like it's cool scene throughout the years how they first started just you know just three piece like guitar bass and drums and mm-hmm. vocals and then it was cool like how eventually they incorporated like more guitars you know like an acoustic guitar and then an electric for like for example like songs like flowers yeah, and then on th- on this record, that song is killer. By the way, I gotta interrupt. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with the new record, like adding two electric guitars, like it's pretty cool seeing like the growth after all these years. Like, and it's cool because like the the structure and stuff, like it's it's it stays like it's it's definitely getting better, but it's still true to like what they started with, and mm-hmm. it's like the music's very easy to. I don't know how to explain. What's the word to? The, yeah digest like because it's like simple but it's just really great like that these guys have like s- always been like writing great music and this just never changes like regardless of like the growth and like adding more stuff it's still true to who they are and it's still it's still fucking great music that they write so <laughs> yeah feels like it yeah and the sim- simplicity is um powerful with the red pairs that's crazy. I know what you mean. I feel like kind of what Henry was saying too. I think being younger, um, you kind of do overdo it, like, especially on drums. Sure. You're doing like, like fills just to do yeah, fills, yeah. or this, this is cool, so you do it. You know, or guitar. You know, like right. I think it was literally learning of like how something so simple and steady can carry so much weight, or how even sometimes like 
the absence of sound is stronger than sound itself you know right like it's like breaking those things down like as you get older and understand and like mature sure and i guess as you open your mind up i think the thing too that i think i always kind of held back was that like you know we're like a three-piece band or two of us like let's just do that you know but i i think looking right. back it was a, in a way limiting because there's songs where i feel like it could have used a nicer guitar melody or like some extra stuff you know but yeah. i think because we didn't have like the 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 people to do it we just kept it as as is which also gave those songs like their own identity you know like that mm -hmm. they're like simplistic they don't have a bass or there's one guitar on there or something like that but i feel like moving forward it's like it's this new avenue that we've like been um approaching and, and discovering about like you know it's like not not backing down or like maybe we can add more than what we actually have if it's gonna right. make sense with the song and like give it more you know you're trying to make the song like each piece of art the best you think it, it, uh, it can be you know now i think we're at a place where we can like we have an understanding of we're just gonna do what, like what the song needs what we feel it needs regardless of like what it is or or how many instruments it has you know what i mean yeah yeah well i hope um in 10 years i have you on the show again and you guys have a 30 piece band with all kinds of weird time signatures math rock and you're like fuck that old stuff <laughs> um well i want to play didn't realize is that cool to y'all yeah it's okay. cool here we go
great song. So I want to dig into the recording or writing process. How does it start back there in the studio? Now that you're kind of have a whole studio, do you write while the tape's rolling, if you will? I feel like uh, I've I've never really liked writing in the studio. I you know I feel like mm-hmm. the I feel like a lot of the stuff Henry kind of has in mind or he showed it to me or I have like little little ideas here and there. But the majority is like it's a, it's kind of made I guess at home at Henry. I'd say. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the ideas already, like, are either phone voice memos that I've kind of had, like, throughout the years that maybe while we're working on an album, I'm like, mm, it's too soon to put this out. Like, well, I'll see where it might fit if, if like, the guys like it too. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I kind of just start, like, starting everything with an acoustic guitar. I, I think I like the simplicity of uh, an acoustic guitar, and if it sounds good on acoustic, it should sound good with with anything that's kind of the concept i have and yeah i think that's basically the the start of it and then we i take it to jose and then it becomes what it is you know do you all play different instruments or do you play the instruments that you play live uh i think what's what's cool about uh how we approach things and how we communicate i guess is i think we're all very open you know like henry can have drum beats i can have like a guitar ideas or a vocal mm-hmm. idea and i think we're all very open and i understand like I think I don't really think of ourselves as like, you know, the singer or the guitarist or the drummer. I think yeah. we're we're musicians where we can kind of like we just happen to play that instrument. You know what yeah. I mean? I feel like um, it's it's a lot more than just like this is your your, your instrument. Like worry about your part. It's about worrying the whole picture as a whole and how your part is is uh, is like a like a paint in the picture. If that makes sense. Sure. Or yeah, brush, yeah. yeah. And yeah, you just yeah. want to like. Uh, you want to use it like well, you know, and sometimes not use it at all. You know, there's like, oh, you know, well, this this one is good without drums, Henry. Let's just leave it like the acoustic, right. you know. So, I think that's that's a really cool thing that we have is that we all understand how different parts of of a, of a song can work, how different instruments can work, and we're not just limiting ourselves to what we play. Right. Yeah, adding to like what Jose was saying. Like for example, there's a, a song where I recorded the keys, but I don't even play keys. Like I'm not even. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just cool, like, you know, like, Henry's like, oh, like, you record it, you know, like, okay, like, fuck it, I'm done. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm the bassist, like, I only want to record bass. Like, no, if if I got to record a guitar part or bass part or keys or drums, <laughs> yeah. then yeah, fuck it, I'm up for it, you know. Yeah, and I've, I've had not enough, I would say, experience with bands I've recorded with, either bands I was in or people I'm in a session with. But when it does happen, when... You know, someone who doesn't typically play drums sits down at the drums, even though sometimes it's hard for my fragile ego. I'm like, that's actually fucking cool. But and I've done I've played the dumbest guitar on some records before where where the people are like, that's kind of cool. You know, and it's like barely in the mix, but it adds a lot. I love that. I think it should happen more often, frankly. I think what I've what I've kind of found out is like it really matters about the people you're doing it with yeah you know? yeah like it, like like even I, I when you think about touring i'm like you know like it, it doesn't feel like you're working or playing a show doesn't feel like work it feels like you're hanging out with your friends sure. and you're just like you're just fucking around for like you know? and then you go play a show and then you go eat or something you know it just feels yeah. like like a fun and i think that's what's really cool about and i know that like uh, it wouldn't always it, it wouldn't feel that way if it wasn't with the right people or right. doing something that you're not passionate or that that you love, you know. I feel like uh, I've heard stories of people like, yeah, I just you know like when I go on tour, I just take a book and I put on headphones. And I don't really talk to anybody like in the mm-hmm. band, you know. We just kind of, and I think that, that that's a big, that's a very saddening thing that you can't. You know, spending so much time with each other, writing things and creating things that you don't you don't connect well as people. Yeah, right. And that would take a lot of the fun of. Yeah, like for this one too. Right now that you're mentioning about you know, someone else sitting in the, in the drum seat or like doing drums. I think it's the first time I kind of felt weird, like having like drum parts made in songs Mm -hmm. because I felt like I was kind of taken away from like Jose's creation in, in a sense, you know, like I'm like, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be writing parts like that. Kind of felt not betrayal, but it felt like I should be kind of leaving that out. Yeah. Staying in your lane. Yeah. Kind of like I should just do instruments. I know. But it was kind of cool just Jose being like, oh, no, it, it kind of sounds cool. Or like, I'm thinking about keeping this, but like changing like certain things of it. So yeah. that, was a, that was a cool um, just just thing to like approach music in a, a open-minded likeness, you know? 
It is. Yeah. And that's kind of why I mentioned jokingly, but only half jokingly. When someone's playing drums on a record that I'm fucking supposed to be playing drums on, you know, it's like, again, uh, to add to what you're saying, it's like the right group of people, uh, that shit gets broken down, which is beautiful. Yeah, because it can hit your ego. You know, it can definitely yeah. blow well, it. But I think, yeah, I think it's just looking at the the big picture and looking at like doing what's best. You know, being a, a team, a team, a teammate, so to speak. And it's like, yeah. yeah, like this, like like Henry's ideas. I think it's actually better than mine, and that's okay. You know, that's yeah, like, it's gonna be better for the song. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you, and I hope this isn't too stupid, but I feel like <laughs> I'm missing something here. Can you? What's the what's the story behind? The name of the band, the Red Pairs. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so Hen- Henry and I started as a, as a two piece band. You know, mm-hmm. just us two. Because it was really hard to find people like in El Monte or like that. You know, just around you that could like have the same passion about music, have the same influences, the same like you know, just very like the time for it. Mm-hmm. You know, especially like, I think us having like a very a very deep like passion for it and a very like. Uh, looking like ahead we want to we want we want to tour we want to do festivals we want to do this for a living not just do it for like a year or two or like just have it on the side so it was hard to find people who like had that kind of dedication and uh i think we wanted to say uh i think like the pair as in just the two of us right yeah and then yeah that ended up becoming like like pair like the fruit like a play on words and then in the becoming like uh <laughs> like adding a color because we thought about like you know all these cool ass bands like the black keys the white stripes they have, yeah. You know, yeah have a color in, the, in, I like the, it. in their name <laughs> and you're, you're, you're 18 just trying to think of the coolest yeah. you know like, yeah so we were just like yeah we're like the red pairs and we didn't think they existed so well like, that's even cooler to see it doesn't exist you know? right yeah i gotcha all right yeah, I, I I guess you, had, you had to be there i guess i should have <laughs> put that together uh, when you're not on tour, what do you what do you guys do at home? <laughs> when you're not play playing music, <laughs> we play video games. You do? That's, uh, yeah, that's what we used to like. Oh, that's what we do like to pass time is just play video games. But we try to play together, or yeah, either that or honestly, I'm still kind of just trying to create or clean my room that's come back and it's time yeah. to unpack all the clothes and <laughs> no i know that yeah. one yeah what video I, games I was, do you play oh we play fortnite <laughs> oh okay all right <laughs> you play online yeah but yeah i was gonna i was gonna add to that too i think like a, a big thing maybe you can relate to this too joe because you you know you've been on a tour but like and it kind of hit me like like when i felt this of like you kind of don't know what to do with all the time you have right and it's, it, can, it no. can be like a like a bad thing where it's like you just have too much time on your hands and like you're, you're coming from like this like every night like 30 days or a month and you're coming from like um all these all these like highs you know you're playing a show meeting people it's like it's just a crazy like ride and yeah. you just could you come home to like to like a boringness it feels right <laughs> yeah well it's like nothing's yeah. planned either so you're mm-hmm. like every day when you're on tour if it's 30 days you know or we're, we're all fortunate to have this uh job if if you want to call it that and um you you have your job every single there's there's nothing it never gets you eat and then you do your job which is play a show and for 30 days and if you get home and you don't have anything to do that'll mess with your head that's for sure yeah and i i kind of realized how like how important it is to have like structure and discipline like, on, on your own time your own self-discipline sure. your own yeah. self like s- self-control because it's just like i can see how like a lot of people you know like, you hear those stories of like they just kind of fall into bad habits fall around you know bad the wrong people a bad a bad crowd and how that can affect like their their livelihoods you know yeah. So I think it's something we kind of always talk about, just like kind of hitting that depression, you know, you just like, oh, yeah. you just come down and you just kind of like, yeah, you kind of miss that high, I guess. And like, how, like learning how to like handle that, accept, like, acknowledge that, accept that and work with that. And I think we, we found that out like when we first started touring, you know, because they kind of told us, you know, like, it was like, hey, like, just, just you know, be careful or be aware of that you might, you know, have like, some kind of like down, some yeah. kind of down, yeah, come down from things. And I think we're, we try to stay on top of that, just not, you know, spending our, our time in a, in a bad way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because every time you play a show, at least I'll speak for myself, it's a huge hit of serotonin and adrenaline. And that's like, 
I don't that you don't get that at home if you're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, you don't get that you don't get that like a uh, lot I know, but anywhere, you know, it's hard to find that feeling. And it's like you wanna go look for that maybe you know, where to find that feeling yeah. again. Yeah. Get a dog. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> that yeah. is a good one actually. <laughs> um all right well what's what's in store for 24 as far as touring goes um we have well we have coachella coming up so oh. i think the, we're gonna start the year right. with coachella we have uh the forum which is kind of Bebin in june really and we have uh, yeah so, oh so a, a lot of a lot of cool it's been a very a very it's crazy joe <laughs> oh that's <laughs> like, crazy just, like that's you gonna know be good. when you have uh, and we have a, a, a hopeful tour that we're that we're starting to uh, plan around in like the fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. You are looking forward to it all? It sounds like some serious shows. Yeah, but see, it's the time right now where it's like we're just waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, what just do we do? There. You're just sitting there waiting. Yeah. Like it, it's funny. I I, I kind of miss like when we're, Henry and I were kind of starting off. Uh, we used to play like almost every day, or like three times a week or some mm-hmm. shit, like twenty times a month. You know, some yeah. like. Cause and it was so fun to do. Cause you're just like Friday night, Saturday night, you were out playing. And then when it came to be more of like a a career thing, it was like, well, you need to kind of like split up your your plays for yeah. the best result. And that was like a hard thing for me to deal with. Cause it was like, oh, like, I kind of miss playing every day or like almost like once a week. And now I have to wait months to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't accidentally yeah. make a record before this record comes out. <laughs> it's dangerous. I was gonna say that we had a backyard show uh, residency. No, I'm just kidding. It's like every, every every week. Yeah, there were like a lot of like house shows. Yeah, like a lot of backyard shows. Like tr- yeah. driving an hour out because you couldn't do them in the Monte. You know, like, they get they get shut down by yeah. the cops. You gotta go out like an hour to like Fontana. Yeah, yeah two shows one day. Like play one show, drive to the next another city, play another show. Really? Henry goes to work after. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like that. Yeah, that was, sounds was, like was, South was, by was, Southwest. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, that's yeah. insane. That shit was insane. <laughs> yeah, you guys play it this year? No, we played it like twenty eighteen, nineteen. Oh okay. Yeah, but yeah, it was kind of like that. Like you just play, you pack up, go to a different place. Pack up, go to a different yeah. place. Yeah, crazy. All right. Well, I hope to see you. Um, I might be in Los Angeles. Maybe I'll try to go to that forum show with Chicano Backman. Yeah, let That'd us know. Killer. Email us. Yeah, let us um, know. Otherwise. Uh, Travel safe out there on the road. Good luck with the Thank you. Um, Coachella. That'll be fun. Is that your first time playing Coachella? Uh, second time. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're veterans. You're good at <laughs> we, it. We had a question, though, because we, yeah. we, we looked you up. You know, we, we were doing our research, too. And oh, uh, we really? just wanted to, you know, like, <laughs> big fans big fans of Modest Mouse, you know, oh. like, the work you've done with the Shins and Cold Cold Work. It's a lot of, it's very cool to see, like, all, like, it's just, like, like the bands we, like, listen to and heard, and heard of and are influenced by, you know, that's cool. To oh, see that you've, you've worked. Yeah. That's thank really you. cool. Maybe we can all play together someday. Yeah, that'd be sick. <laughs> that'd be fun. Um, cool. All right. Well, um, thanks for your time. It was great meeting you guys, and congrats oh, on course. the record. It's killer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you somewhere in Los Angeles or somewhere or on the road. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take all right, care. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye. <laughs> Just wanted
Come 